Hello again, friends. We are quickly approaching the end and our second lecture in nuclear chemistry is going to cover more depth the types of radioactive decay. Um, the objective here is to write and balance nuclear equations for different types of radioactive decay like alpha decay, beta, gamma emission, positron emission. We're going to be writing these equations to balance for mass the entire time. So radioactive isotopes are unstable and will decay into other elements. It's called transmutation. But what are the different decay modes and the products of such decays? Like, how do they get there? Which one is this? We saw a little bit on table O in our last vi video about the symbols used in nuclear chemistry. And we're going to see how those start to apply into a nuclear equation, which we did see two of in the previous lecture, but we're getting into more detail. We learn there are different types of radioactive decays, like alpha, beta, gamma, positron, emission, and the different penetrating power. Um, we're going to look at those more in depth. So we talked about, we saw a little bit about the gamma, alpha, and the beta last time. So let's get into our notes here. So radioactive decay. The following decays occur in natural as a result of unstable neutron to proton ratios. Alpha decay. That's the first mode of decay. It's a transmutation where an unstable nucleus emits alpha particles. And the symbol for alpha particles, there's two actually, 4HE2 or 4alpha2. They're products in the reaction, so these are always on the right-hand side, products. Products are on the right-hand side. And the nucleus becomes smaller with less positive charge. Alpha emission is characteristic of heavy nuclei. So like greater than mass, greater than 83 AMU. I'm sorry, not 83 AMU. Greater, mass greater than, look at my periodic table here, 200 AMU which is coincidentally how much bismuth kind of weighs. Um, example, alpha decay for this stuff called plutonium. Everybody's heard of plutonium before, but it's used to make uranium because it emits alpha particles. So here in this alpha decay, we have a plutonium nucleus, very large, and decaying to produce a uranium nucleus and an alpha particle. So it's just a lost a little bit of the mass, but it has become more stable in doing so. Let's see if our little interactive here works. Do, 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 do. I guess it's, oh, there we go. Internet. Yes, internet. Here we go. So alpha decay is kind of like that. So we started with suborgium 263, lost a helium particle, and it became 259. So 59 plus 4 is 263. And so seaborgium 263 became rutherfordium and helium. It's decay. So particle falls apart into two. Radioactive particle falls apart into two. Okay. If you notice the numbers, they all add up at the end. 259 plus 4 makes 263. And 104 plus 2 makes 106. And 155 plus 2 makes 157. So mass is conserved in any nuclear decay. Let's see. We're back to our lecture. Good. So alpha decay can be summarized as follows. Atomic number decreases by 2 every single time. Decreases minus. Protons decreases by 2 because the atomic number decreases by Two. The atomic mass decreases by four, and the number of neutrons decreases by two because two protons and two neutrons are lost. So two protons and two neutrons are lost by the nucleus. There we go. Alpha particle, HE, 4 over 2. So plutonium-239 decays by alpha particle emission as follows. This is kind of what we were seeing, not with the same element, but uh, 
in that previous little animation. So the 239 has got to equal the 235 plus the 4. So that's how we know that the mass is conserved for the atomic mass. Remember, protons, 94, has got to equal 92 plus 2, these numbers. So, and it does, and that's a good thing. Now, in this 24,000 years in this particular example means that it takes 24,000 years, roughly, for plutonium to turn into uranium, which means that plutonium is very radioactive for a very long time which can be a problem for us human beings if we wanted to use the stuff. Now, here's some examples showing alpha decay. Charge and mass must be conserved. And alpha decay means that our product is always going to be a helium nuclei. <coughs> Pardon me. And some other element. So, we look at the nuclear mass. 220 equals something plus 4. Hmm, something plus 4 equals 220. Must be 216. Then you look at the atomic number, mass, and number. 87 has got to equal something plus 2. Hmm, something plus 2 is 87. Oh, it's got to be 85. So now we know the atomic mass and atomic number of this particular element. We don't know what it is until we look it up on the periodic table. And atomic number 85 is AT for antimony, I believe, or is astatine. I can't always remember everyone. But AT is the symbol for the element that is produced through this natural transmutation. Again, we are balancing for mass to show that nothing has gone missing. So radon, 222, 222 mass has got to equal something plus something. Well, alpha decay is what we're talking about here. So that first something has got to be an alpha particle. Now you could use the HE symbol like it is here if you wanted to, but I like to use the alpha symbol. So now that I know I've got alpha decay, because that's the prompt here, I have to figure out 4 plus something is equal to 222. Well... It's not so tough. 218 plus 4 equals 222. And then 86 for the atomic number here has got to equal 2 plus something. Well, it's not so tough either. That's got to be an 84. So now all I have to do is look up the symbol, atomic number 84, P-O, polonium. Polonium. Okay, so those are some basic alpha decays. Beta decay is the second type of radioactive decay. It's a nucleus where a beta particle is emitted or produced as a result of a nuclear disintegration. So something said to undergo beta decay is called a beta emitter. So alpha decay, alpha emitters, beta decay, beta emitters. Sometimes they can do both, but we're not really going to see those examples. So cesium, in this example, cesium-137 with an atomic mass of 55, turns into... Barium-137 with a mass of 56. What? What? It got heavier? How is that possible? Well, the way that it's possible is the electron that it emits has a negative charge. Po uh, beta emission is like, it, it's weird, like a neutron turns into a proton kind of thing going on there. Um, but the basic understanding is still the same. We kind of treat the reaction arrow as an equal sign. So 137 equals 137 plus 0 because this is the beta particle. It has no mass, no mass. And the charge is negative charge. And that's something that I've struggled with in the past. That well, How could you have a negative charge? Oh, wait, it's an electron. So of course it's got a negative charge at the bottom there. So when we're looking across, so the cesium mass, 137, is kind of just transferred over because we had to add zero to it. But the atomic number gets bigger. Why? Because 56 minus 1 is equal to 55. But remember, we always have to have our equals. Got to equal it up at the end. So 56 minus 1 is 55. That's the nature of a beta emission. So the atomic number increases by 1 in beta emission. Protons increase by 1 in beta emission. Mass always stays the same. Neutrons decreases by 1 because a neutron has turned into 
a proton. And the way they've explained that is because it's emitted an electron by doing so. Some weird stuff happens inside the nucleus in that kind of quantum proton neutron soup going in there. So the example problems by showing beta decay. That's what we're going to be doing. So beta decay, we better always have that zero beta negative one or zero E negative one in our products. And we treat our reaction arrow as an equal sign for all intents and purposes. So we have an atomic mass of 32. And it says the mass never changes because, well, we're adding zero to it. So we got 32 mass. That's good. The not atomic number increases by 1. So 15, so this is going to have to turn into 16, because 16 minus 1 is 15. Now all we have to do is look up the atomic symbol for this. Sulfur, S. There it is. So radioactive phosphorus 32 decays into sulfur 32 by beta decay. That's kind of like what this problem is saying, the equation is saying. Next example, we got carbon-14 doing some beta decay. So one of your products has always got to be the beta particle. You can use the E or the beta symbol. It doesn't really matter. And then you have to treat the arrow as an equal sign, essentially. So 14 turns into, oh, this must have an atomic mass of 14, because the atomic mass doesn't change in beta decay. The atomic number must be one larger than it used to be, so this has got to be a 7. And then we look up the element symbol, that's nitrogen. So radioactive carbon-14, which is in all of our human bodies, turns into nitrogen-14 by beta decay. So your radioactive carbon is turning into nitrogen. That's stable, stable nitrogen over time. Now lead-214, lead PB-214, definitely a radioactive carbon. We got our beta particle. I'm just going to use the other form of notation for it. Mass doesn't change in beta emission, but the number of protons increases. So I look up our elements. It's not lead, it's bismuth, B-I, the last stable element on the planet before everything becomes radioactive. Anything heavier than that, radioactive. Okay. Let's look at some positron emission. Positron is really rare. We do have to give it some time and some attention. It's when a positron is produced during the conversion of a proton to a neutron. Okay, this is some weird stuff, again, that happens inside the nuclei where we produce a positron, which is a positively charged electron. Um, it can be summarized as follows. The atomic number decreases by one. Protons decrease by one. Mass stays the same. Neutrons increases by one. So we're going to drop our atomic number and drop our proton. So it's kind of like something we're similar with, we're familiar with already. So we got our positron. We're going to drop our atomic number and our atomic mass. Uh, so I'm sorry, mass stays the same, 37. So we, our mass stays the same. Our atomic number decreases. So it's a lot like alpha emission, except that instead of taking away 2, we're taking away 1. 18, argon. Argon, 37. Plus the positron particle. Uh, rubidium, 81. Mass does not change. Number of protons decreases by 1. And we always have to have our 1e positive 1 for our other particle. we got to find our symbol here. Atomic number 36 is krypton, K-R, noble gas again. What happens when neon 19, noble gas, a radioactive one, undergoes positron emission? The atomic mass doesn't change. The number of, neutro uh, sorry, the number of protons changes by 1 drops. we got our positron particle, let me just do it the other way, beta positive 1, and element number 9 is fluorine, 19, which is actually stable. So the reason why elements decay is to become stable. So when you produce a stable product, that's usually a good thing. Uh, gamma rays, highly penetrating type of nuclear radiation, similar to x-rays and light. These things go through everything. doesn't stop by a piece of foil or concrete. It's hard to do. 
no mass, no charge, just energy. So we can't really show a nuclear equation for them because barium-137 is, well, barium-137. It just gets rid of gamma rays, types of, it's a, it's a wavelength of light. So gamma transmutation isn't really a transmutation. So that's why gamma rays are so weird and rare. Well, they're not rare, but they're just dangerous, really. Uh, right and balanced nuclear equations for different types of radioactive decay. So alpha decay, we've got our 4HE2 as a product. Beta decay, we've got our 0E negative 1 as a product. Positron, we've got 0E positive 1 as a product. And gamma emission, well, there's no real way to do those. Gamma emission usually accompanies one of the other types of radioactive decay. Uh, in our practice pack, we've got a lot of balancing these equations to do, page 4 through 8. And you got a quiz on CASEL. So thanks for watching. Uh, you're halfway through the unit's lectures. There's only four this time around. Thank you.